Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at Bitcoin and the uh, Bitcoin and blockchain related stocks. Okay, uh, so first up we're going to take a look here at uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, USD. Uh, th this is the, um, I believe this is the Coinbase chart here and, and, and as you can see with this linear chart, you know, it's been it, since making the 20,000 uh, peak here, it had it, been in this long downtrend and then it's trying to uh, find support down here from the, uh, the, the this previous low and so it hit 8000 today and then it, and then and then it pulled back and so so 8000 is the big level to break so you can see how far it, it's pulled back from, from the highs so this was the Eiffel Tower pattern and it, and it fully re retraced from the previous breakout as you can see it's lined up right now you can see the dotted line here it's lined up with right before the the, the huge breakout so uh, yeah so let's take a look at the uh, candlestick chart and, and so you could see it came up and it, and it formed this uh, you know this top up here in in March and then it came back down and, and what it's done is it's retested the February lows you have the low over here on uh, uh, February the 6th and, and so uh, you know the support zone here has been holding the last uh, couple of weeks and, and so today there was a nice uh, or you know yesterday uh, on this chart there was this nice bounce uh, this candle I believe set at four o'clock today uh, Pacific Standard Time and then now a red candle is forming you can see it's hitting the previous uh, support level from here in March March, okay, before it broke down and came down to this next level. Uh, this is the, the blue line here is the 300 day simple moving average. And you can see it drop below that level on the 29th of March, and that had turned into resistance. Well, well uh, you know, today there was that, that close above, and then now you have the uh, uh, another candle forming above that level. So, what you want to see is you want to see the blue line turn into support. That, that's the 300 day simple moving average at 7,536. So, it needs to stay above this line. And, and then uh, the, the next level, it Needs to break is this this prior support zone you could see here it's basically this 8000 level if you can get above 8,000, then what you're looking for is a run up here to the 50-day simple moving average. That's the green line currently at 8,616. And so that's the upside potential. If it can break above 8, it, you know, it could run all the way up to 8,600. That's going to be a huge level to break. You can see it was the, the green line, which is the 50-day simple moving average. You know, it was resistance back here. You know, it's topped out at that 100-day simple moving average. When it, once it dropped below that 50, it really got moving. Um, you could also see above the 50-day simple moving average, you have the 200-day simple moving average and the 100-day simple moving average ready to converge. Uh, notice that you had the, uh, you know, you had the death cross here with the 50-day uh, simple moving average crossed over the 200-day simple moving average to the downside. And so it's just going to be really important that it gets above eight and then breaks back above that eight, eight you know, back above that that 50-day simple moving average to get a new uptrend going. It, it's broken this downtrending channel, and so it's in the process of breaking that. It's just a matter of breaking this uh, March support level and, and uh, you know that, that that's now resistance and then turning that into support okay let's look at GBTC this is the Bitcoin investment trust this trades uh, over the counter and this is a way to trade Bitcoin without buying the actual currency it you know it's supposed to follow uh, Bitcoin's movement uh, it did close up a eight, 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 uh, you know nearly nine percent today uh, you want to see RSI get back above 50 that would be a signal the charts heating up fast O's back above 50 for the first time since back here in March and, and so the the bullish technical development today was the close above the dotted purple line and above the red line. That's the 220 day simple moving averages. Also, the middle Bollinger Band, okay, the dotted purple line. Last time there was a close above that level was back here on the 6th of March. And the, and the close below on the 7th, that signaled the start of this whole downtrend. So, this is the first close above since the downtrend started. So, this is signaling a possible bullish change in trend. Look down here, you can see the, the, the pink line has crossed the line line to the upside. That's an EMA8, EMA4 bullish cross. Crossover, so that is an early reversal signal. As long as the candles keep riding EMA's four and eight support higher, and they stay and they stay above this two hundred and twenty day simple moving averages, it's going to signal the start of a new uptrend. Now, now if the share if if it closes back below and it fails to turn twelve into support, uh, you know that's going to signal um, more consolidation, not ready to go. It has to stay above this uh, middle Bollinger Band currently at twelve thirty four uh, to get this new uptrend going. Now the next target's going to be the fifty. 
day simple moving average at 1443. Notice that level was hit um, the last couple of times uh, when, when it tried to run. And, and so that, that's likely to be the next target. If it fails to break again, that's going to be the profit taking zone. If it closes above, then that's going to be the signal that you know Bitcoin is breaking out higher since GBTC follows Bitcoin's movement. You could see there was a, a, a volume spike today. Still not huge volume, but but it is picking up after some uh, low volume. Okay, so so now let's take a look at Overstock. This is uh, you know the uh, one of the largest uh, the, the largest caps for a Bitcoin related stock. And so uh, yeah, we'll see how uh, Overstock's doing here. It closed up eight percent today, so it's finally getting a bid. As you can see, it can't you know it, it also started a downtrend just like Bitcoin. Uh, you know when Bitcoin went bearish and and GBTC went bearish. You can see over here, you know, they all broke down in March. Well, at the same time, Overstock broke down because now Overstock is tied to Bitcoin's movement. Okay, so since they've synced together, you know, it, it, you know, it, that works out great when Bitcoin's going higher, but it's really worked against the stock as as uh, Bitcoin's dropped. So is Overstock. Okay, so now it has it down here, bouncing off of the 300-day simple moving average at 33.84. That's always going to be the load zone. Just just take note of that if support holds. It's the bottom moving average. It's the, it's the key level. It's the 300-day simple moving average. It should be support. If it fails to be support, the chart is severely broken. Okay, so notice how the AMA4 has turned into support here. You know, all these closes are above that level. You know, the, the, this red candle is slightly below, but you can see what I'm saying. All these candles are trying to turn that EMAs 4 and 8 into support. Today, you have the, the pink line crossing the, the lime line to the upside. That's the early reversal signal. That's just what you want to see. And now the share price is hitting the key level to break. That's the middle Bollinger Band at 44. 14. If it can close above that level, the, then the 200-day simple moving average is just right above. It makes it tough when you have another moving average just above. But if it can get above both those levels, then it could get a new uptrend going. So keep an eye on it. You could see back here when it got above the middle Bollinger Band and there was a moving average just above, it stalled out. So you know you have to keep an eye on that. If it breaks above 40, it's going to have to break that 4250 zone. So uh, yeah, if, if uh, overstock fails to break 40 and turn 40 into support, that's going to signal more consolidation. It's only in play if it stays above the EMAs 4 and 8. It has to stay above that 37.25 level. If you look at the 15-minute chart, you can see it's trading above all the moving averages. You have the 200, 300, 150 simple moving averages. And then it's trading above EMAs 4, 8, and 13, the pink line and orange lines. And then also above the dotted purple line. It's currently above all the moving averages on the chart. Okay, It did channel out today. It has this uh, sideways type of channel going. And, and so, uh, yeah, you know all the magic happened on the first candle and then it failed to break out higher and so it's going to have to happen now it has to break high close horizontal resistance the closing price here at 11 o'clock if it can get above this 39.60 level that's going to signal it wants to head higher if you see it drop below 38.40 and definitely if it drops below this uh, 50 simple moving average at 38.17 that's going to signal consolidation and not ready to head higher okay take a look at square ticker symbol sq so now this is tied to bitcoin as well um you know it is also in the financial financial uh sector, which uh, tomorrow we have, uh, you know, BlackRock, uh, uh, you know, uh, ha reported today and everybody was just in love with their reporting and, and, you know, the earnings report. But if you looked at the daily chart and I know Kramer was just drooling all over BlackRock, but I mean, I don't think he looked at the daily chart because it hit the 50 day simple moving average and pulled back and formed a long upper wick on the candle. So it failed to break resistance and it closed. It did not close strong. And so to me, that was kind of a red flag on the possibility for tomorrow. I'll try to, you know, see if I can get a bank chart or a bank uh, video out tonight with all the banks reporting tomorrow, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in the next video. But let's take a look at uh, Square. I mean, you would think though, you know what I mean, if, if the banks were like super bullish and they're ready to go, and XLF was, uh, you know, pushing today, that that BlackRock would have gotten above that that 50-day simple moving average. But it hit that level early and it pulled back and it formed a long upper wick on the candle. So I mean, maybe they are loading, and then tomorrow it's going to spring load above that level, but if BlackRock fills the blade break that 50 day simple moving average in my opinion it's a, it's a red flag it should be able to bust above and get moving higher if, if the banks are going to get running so just keep that in mind if you're trading the banks tomorrow uh, and, and the banks did rally hard into earnings and many times they pull them back beforehand and then load and then you get that juice you know so ha has the juice already been cooked in prior um, we'll just have to see uh, and so uh, yeah I mean it seems like it'll be a red flag if the uh, banks are uh, don't do well tomorrow right 
so so they should they should do really well. Everybody's saying record earnings, and I hope they do, and it rocks out for everyone. Okay, let's look at SQ here. Um, so so it, it it did drop below this 50-day simple moving average, the green line, currently at 47.80. Um, it got back above that level, and now it's back above EMAs 4, 8, and 13. So this is a nice move today. This is a really bullish move. Is if it can stay above all four of these levels. And that's going to signal it wants to head higher. That that's the uh, um, 40, 48.73. So you want to see it stay above that 48.75 level. And then the next big level that breaks this middle Bollinger Band at 50.75. If it gets a close above that level, that's going to be your signal. Okay, Square's ready to get a new uptrend going. And why do I say that? Well, look back here. The exact same setup. It got below the, the middle Bollinger Band, the dotted purple line. It came down. You know, it tested the 50 and the 100 down here, and then it got back above. And on this candle right here on the the 15th of February that that signaled the start of the uptrend again and so here we go again you know it, this is the exact same setup below the middle Bollinger Band came down tested the, the 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 50 right it came down got near the hundred and now it's back above right and, and so here we are this is the, this is this setup right here is it gonna bust through the middle Bollinger Band and get an uptrend going again and then retest this 58 level or is it gonna stall out at, at this 51 resistance zone fail to break and turn into support and pull back you know so if you're a bull you're looking for this move and a new uptrend okay so as long as the candles keep writing EMAs 4 and 8 support that's going to signal more upside potential what what you're looking for and I'll, I'll show you the crossover and this is an easy thing to keep an eye on if you use these moving averages is look at the cross right here so notice how when the candles are heading lower that they're below the pink and the lime lines and then notice how the pink line crosses over the lime line okay this is your early reversal signal and now all the candles are riding above the pink line so look down here the candles are below the pink line right Check out how the pink and lime line are pinched. Okay, they're currently at 48.31 and 48.23 with the pink line just crossing slightly above the lime line today. That's exactly what you want to see. So this is the start of this action right here. If the next candle, you know, pushes higher, that's going to get that pink line riding. As long as they stay above that level, that 48.31, it signals to ride square. If it drops below, that's going to signal not ready to go in consolidation. It has to stay above that 50-day simple moving average at 40. 4780. If you look here at the square 15 minute chart, you can see here it has this nice uptrend going. It's above all the moving averages the 200, the, the, the 100, the, the 300, and the, the 50 simple moving averages. It's above the 20 uh, simple moving average of the middle Bollinger Band here. It is hitting the top of the channel. So it closed pushing hard. You know, it tried to break above. You can see the ascending resistance. And so it hit that and it pulled back. If it fails to break above 50, that's going to be your, your signal. Okay. It it could consolidate and it might drop back down to the bottom of the channel which is this 48 to, to uh, 48 50 to 49 level it has to hold the 50 simple moving average at 48 65 and it would be best if it stays above that middle Bollinger Band at 49 if it comes down and test it needs to hold those levels if it drops below that's going to signal this uptrend has broken and then you could see it drop down and test these lower moving averages okay let's look at DPW this was the big winner today for the Bitcoin blockchain related stock so congrats everybody I know a lot of people in the chat were trading this and people had loaded early on some of these plays so so it was cool to see they followed through so congrats everyone this was a nice move this actually followed through and, and uh, closed pretty strong today you know it, it uh had that that move above the uh, middle Bollinger Band early in the day, and so we you know we put out alerts saying it had to stay above that level. That was 95, and so it did close above that level, and then it broke above the next uh, a key resistance level, which was the 300-day simple moving average at 110. That was a bullish close above that level. You can see the next three levels are all lined up here. You have the upper Bollinger Band and, and the 250-day simple moving averages. If it can break above 134 and, and and turn that into support, it could get moving back up to this. 200 or 100 day simple moving average at 208. Now, if it stalls out at this 130 resistance zone, that could signal a temporary top and it could pull back. You have all the moving averages, you know, or, or most of them are all in this zone right here. And so you really want to see it stay above 110 and then break 130. If it drops below 110, then that middle Bollinger Band is going to be back on deck. You know, now that it's above a dollar, it needs to stay above a dollar. There is a, a downside risk uh, factor here on the chart, and, and, and it's on uh, these uh, most of these. Uh, small cap blockchain charts and so it's something to keep in mind an eye on you know I, I never like to see this with a penny stock um, that there, there's a gap you know there's a gap on the chart and, and you know that that's just a it's just not what you want to see um, you know it doesn't set up a good uh, it's not a good setup okay you could see here there is an unfilled gap here too 
And so look at this. It didn't quite fill, but there is a small gap between these two candles. So you know, it, 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 you know how gap fills are. Many times a gap fill could be a climax. There's another gap up here. There's a lot of gaps on this chart. So so you know, just keep that in mind. There, there's a lot of gaps. When you have multiple gaps on a chart, it makes gaps not as significant. But uh, for penny stocks, the thing is, is that that they, uh, you know, so that could be another gap target to fill up at 160. But the uh, the the thing is, is is if the stock fails to break resistance. Distance, the, the, they use that gap fill as a target to pull the share price back to. And so that's the downside risk is that if it comes down and tests that middle Bollinger Band and it fails to hold, they could drop back down into the 80s and, and, and fill this gap. The top of this candle is the bottom of the gap. Okay, if you look at the DPW 15-minute chart, you can see here it heated up yesterday on light volume, but it did close above all the moving averages. These candles here above every moving average, you know, it's above the 200, the 100, the 50, the 300, and the 27 moving averages above EMAs 4, 8, and 13. It closed bullish above all the... Even though it was light volume, it was signaling to you this chart's heating up and then boom, today, you know, the big volume at, at the open and the and, and the big push higher. And the, if the candles are riding, you know, EMA 4, and then you can see here they held EMA 8, you know, the signals to just keep riding. And so that that this had the signal the entire day just to st stick with the trade. You know, tomorrow, if it drops below 119, EMA 4, that'll be a signal it's cooling down a little. You know, EMA 8 at 117 held all day today. So if that broke, that would be a bearish change in trend. And then it has to hold this middle Bollinger Band at 111. And, you know, after making such a strong move today, if it did break below that level, you could see it come down and test that dollar level. Notice that you have the 50 simple moving average at 96. When the middle Bollinger Band breaks on the 15 minute chart, many times it drops to that 50 simple moving average, move, or, you know, moving average level. Okay, let's look at MARA. I know, uh, yeah, I know people loaded up on this one early as well. So nice to see it close up 20%. Good job, you guys. Uh, you know, it came down here and closed back above the middle Bollinger Band. So we were just talking about the gap. I'll show you that again. It has the unfilled gap below. And so that, that was the red flag. It's hard to like get all excited, uh, you know, behind a trade when it starts with the gap up open on a penny stock, because you, you just know that it's not built to last, um, you know, that they're going to come back down and fill that gap eventually. That's how it's, you know, it'd be really, if they did break out here and this just took off running and left that gap unfilled it would just it would just set it up for a possible gap fill at a later date it's better just to get the gap filled and then there's no unfinished business and then it can take off further you know why i say that is because penny ga penny stocks fill gaps you know for so that that's just that's how it goes you can have a stock like Facebook or Caterpillar. You can have these big, uh, large cap stocks that will gap up on earnings. You know, they'll have they'll have gaps on the chart that they won't fill. But that's not how penny stocks operate. Penny stocks fill gaps, and so just especially downward gaps, gaps below. You know, we have a gap up open, and so just keep that in mind. That that if support breaks, this being the middle Bollinger Band at 132, the risk is that it drops down to fill that gap, and so that that would you know uh, uh, drop down to 120 would fill the gap, and then that. Would put it back below EMAs 4, 8, and 13, and that would make it no longer a good play. That long upper wick on the candle shows that they used this move today to take profits. Um, you know, if, if, if the middle Bollinger Band holds, it could get going. And then what you want to see is that 50 day simple moving average at 195 broken. That'd be, that's the next target. If you notice back here, when it closed above the, the middle Bollinger Band on the 12th of March, it failed to hold that level and pulled back. So just uh, keep, keep in mind, it's only going to be a good play here if it stays above the middle Bollinger Band. If you look on the 15 minute chart for Tomorrow. You can see the same thing. It, it, it set up uh, yesterday. You know, it closed above all the moving averages. Even though it was in this tight channel, it was still signaling uh, a very bullish chart. And then today there was that big uh, gap up open. You know, the, the, it, it did. Uh, you know, have weakness. It was the all, all the magic happened in the first two candles of the day. And, you know, this is where all the money was made. You know, the high of the day. And, and then you've got the pullback. And so here you are near the the, the low of day. And, and you know, the low close here. This is the the, the uh, lowest close at 140. It hit that level right on the last candle of the day. And so if that level broke, what you'd be looking at is the uh, 50 simple moving average at 133 tested. It needs to hold that level to head higher. Uh, you know, the open today was here at 136. And so, uh, you know, right now the candles are below EMAs 4, 8, and 13. It needs to get back above this middle Bollinger Band at 148 to get a new uptrend going. And then in order to break out and head to that next level, it's all about breaking 156. 
156. Uh, fail to break 156, and that'll signal uh, not ready to head higher. Okay, let's look at NETE. Okay, closed up nearly 9% today. And like I said, all, all the stocks in this video are blockchain or Bitcoin related. At least the, the companies have stated they are. And then, uh, yeah, if you look here at RSI, it's back about 52. And so it's heating up. Our FASTO about 54. Um, you know, it, it's still bullish here on uh, ADX with plus DI above it, ADX and minus DI. <clears throat> and then today... It had the, the gap up open, but notice this upper wick on the candle. You know, it filled the gap. There's no un, unfilled gap below here, so that's good, except for, yeah, there is a <clears throat> there is an unfilled gap lower uh, down here, though. And so that's always, you know, you know I mean, it just doesn't make as good a chart. Um, this has, uh, you know, an unfilled gap right here. And so it didn't fill the gap on the 10th when it came down. It would have been better, I'm telling you, if it filled the gap. And why do I say that? Well, look at the gap right here between uh, um, high of day on this candle and low of day on this candle, you know? And what did it do? It ran up, you know, it had a beautiful move. But what did it do? It came all the way back and it filled the gap. And look what happened. Once it filled the gap, what happened? It bounced, and that was the signal that it was ready. It had to fill that gap before it could head higher. This is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is it right here. And 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 this is proof that that penny stocks fill gaps. I mean, this is what you don't like to see the setup. It makes it not as good a setup. So since this has a gap down at that 300-day simple moving average, it's hard to get excited about NETE, it, it, especially with this long upper wick. It looks like they were profit taking there. You know that that looks like dilution. Now, now that said, if it does hold the middle Bollinger Band at 774, then it could get a new uptrend going. It could break out higher and leave that gap unfilled, and that does happen sometimes. It's just you know at some point it could come back to fill it. And, and, and so to head higher, uh, it needs to break above this high close here at about 880. That'll be the next big level to break. Um, if, if it fails, to, you can see all the moving averages are lined up here. So it just basically needs to stay above that, uh, um, you know, that 775 level in, in, in order to uh, keep this uptrend going. You can see it closed above the middle Bollinger Band here and it failed to stay above and pulled back. So uh, you don't want to see a repeat of that. As you can see here, it did, uh, you know, it had the magic on the first candle and then they faded the rally. And you can see it had the low close. The, the lowest close of the entire day was the last close of the day. And they dropped it all the way down to the uh, 50 simple moving average. So it, if this green line fails to hold 8, you're going to see a drop down to that open, which is 7, se uh, 780. And then you have the, the moving averages down here. You have the, the 100 simple moving average at 764 would be the next big support level if that if that $8 level failed to hold. Okay, let's look at uh, Riot here. So Riot uh, closed up nearly 13%. Um, you know, it's trying to heat up. Look at the crossover on ADX with green line crossing the black line to the upside. Um, you know, th this is the, uh, you know, uh, sh showing the charts heating up. The last time it had a crossover it was, you know, back here uh, when it when it tried to get a rally going back above the middle Bollinger Band. And you can see today that, that it's the same type of setup, you know, back here on, on the 12th of February, it closed above the middle Bollinger Band for the first time since it, uh, you know, had dropped below back here on the 1st of January. And so now we have the first close today above the middle Bollinger Band since back here on this black candle. So so is a new uptrend going to begin or, or is it going to uh, stall out here and pull back below and keep consolidating? And right now it's all about this blue line. If it can close above 782, it traded above it temporarily. You can see the upper wick. If it can close above, that would be bullish and then it could run up to this 250-day uh, simple moving averages. This, this $10 level would be on deck. Now, now fail to get above 782 uh, and and turn eight dollars into support and that would signal it's just not ready to go it has to stay above 713 that middle Bollinger band if it drops below that would be a red flag you know it, it's consolidated for multiple days in the zone so it's been holding support you know and it and it broke out today above the top of the uh, of this high close resistance from the last couple of weeks and it's just all about trying to get above the blue line you can see it was support over here before uh, before it broke and so now it's become resistance. Okay, let's look at the Riot 15-minute chart. And you can see how, how it closed better than the last two stocks that I showed you. You know, it, it, it came down and hit that low close. But, it, but it, 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 you know, this was the low close. And then it, and then it came up, came back down, tested it, but it bounced off, you know. And it, and it did close above the middle Bollinger Band. So that, that was a better close than the other ones that we were just looking at. And, and so that's, that, that's a good sign, um, you know, that, that, that there were buyers here end of day.
day. Um, so it's all about basically holding the 730 level since that was the low close today. If it drops below that level, <clears throat> then it could drop down to that 50 simple moving average at 711. Now, now if it breaks above 750, you know this this up here, this $8 level, this 8 to 810 level is going to be the big level to break. If it can get above 760, this high close here, then, then that 8 should be on deck. Okay, let's look at SSC here. Okay, so this one, it, it, you know, was running before we had this, at, at, you know, or at the uh, end of March. You know, it was it was a March runner, you know, heading into April, and then it stalled out at this 100-day simple moving average. That's the gold line here. Notice how all, all, all these candles are hitting that level, failing to break. Well, well, once you get a close above 312, and that level turns into support, that'll be your signal that it's finally ready to head higher. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. If it, if it fails to break that level, that then it'll be a signal that it's not ready to go. You know, it looks like it's setting up here. It's still cl it closed today above EMA4 again after closing below the last two days, but it's been holding EMA8. You know, uh, the, it, it consolidated in this very tight range, it, it, and so it has, uh, you know, uh, potential here to, to uh, push higher. You know, it's it's set up for, especially if the uh, the, the blockchain ch charts, uh, the other charts that I showed you follow through. Now, now, if they break down, you know, maybe this will as well. It didn't have very big volume. It needs volume. You can see the volume super light down here. So what more than, li more than likely what's going to need to happen is a, a, a bullish volume spike and a push through resistance. If you can get through that 100-day simple moving average, then this 340 level from the uh, high close from back here on the 14th of February will be the big level to break. Okay, If it drops below EMA 8, that'll be a red flag because it's been holding. And, th and then you could see it drop down. You, uh, you could see all the moving averages are converged here, or mul multiple moving averages are. And so you can see this 250 uh, support zone tested if it drops below 286. Okay, so keep an eye on Kodak. It, it, this is a, you know, they had their Kodak cone thing, coin, and uh, you know, it did close up 2% today. It's been trading in this tight trading range. Look at this channel. So so the entire month of March, it was in a tight channel. You know, it got above a little bit, but pretty much this is the channel. And, and right now it's in the middle. Uh, it, it closed above the middle Bollinger Band today uh, for the first time since back here on this candle. And, and so, it, it's trying to heat back up. Look at all these candles here. Just you know, it just can't bust through resistance. But but it's found major support in this 475, you know, to five dollar zone. And so if it can bust above this gold line that's currently lined up with the uh, top of the channel, 538. That's going to be really bullish. And then you have the 50 uh, simple moving average there, the 50-day simple moving average at 556. And notice how that's lined up with this high close here on these dojis. Uh, th there's a couple of uh, dojis here, uh, the doji candlestick. That's where the, the close is equal to the open. So it forms a really small, real candle body. And, and so if, if you can finally close above that level, that's going to be your clear signal. Okay, Kodak is really in play. Now it's about the close. You can see these upper wicks broke up above resistance and it pulled back but once it closes above and turns into support then it, it, Kodak will be ready to go keep an eye on it um, you know if it can get a, a, another close above the middle Bollinger Band that would be a bullish change in trend it hasn't had two closes above the middle Bollinger Band besides these two dojis here right at that level you know since back here in March and, and so you know if it can turn that level into support a new uptrend could begin okay let's look at TEUM another one closed up uh, nearly two percent today so it was just a slight move and it has kind of a similar setup but this this time it's the 50-day simple moving average. You can see it, it, it bounced off of the 100-day simple moving average currently at 203. And then now it's hitting the 50-day simple moving average, the green line currently at 239. You know, it's hit it multiple times. Every single one of these candles, right, is testing that level. Once it finally breaks above, that's going to be your bullish signal. And then it has to get above the EMA 13 at 244. If it can turn that level into support, the middle Bollinger Band on 266 will be back on deck. Now, now this is only going to be ready to go if it can get above that that 50-day simple moving average. It has to turn 240 into support, you know, and, and break above that 244 level. So if you see it trading above 244, that's going to be your clue. Okay, yeah, TEUM -E is ready to go. Now, if that 240 level continues to be resistance, that'll be a red flag. And if it drops below 230, that's going to signal more consolidation. The downside risk is it comes back down and tests that 100-day simple moving average. Once again, look at the super light volume. You know, this has the classic, uh, you know, declining volume pattern. You know, volume is just uh, super uh, 
declining here. And so, uh, yeah, so, so, so what, what, what it needs now is a uh, bullish volume spike, and that would be the uh, signal that it wanted to break out above resistance. Okay, so it's always, you, you know, when, when you get this uh, declining volume pattern, you know, it, it, it's getting, it, the, the chart's getting wound up. You can see that the, 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 the range, the trading range is super tight. The volume is getting really, really low. And that's usually where you get that you know, it's spring, you know, there's going to be a pop, you know, it could be a red volume spike and drop down, or it could be a green volume spike and break out higher. Keep an eye on it. The charts wound tight right now. Okay. Let's look at FT, FT. This is a thinly traded, you know, it's supposed to be blockchain related stock. Um, you know, you check on your own to make sure they're credible because people are, you know, as we know with uh, long fin, um, you, you never know. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, that the, apparently this is another one of those companies that that's blockchain related. And so, uh, keep an eye on it. You know, it's been just a, a dilution monster. You know, it keeps getting above the middle Bollinger Band and failing to hold, and they pull it back. It, you know, I'm just showing it because it's another one in the in the. Uh, you know, it's like one of the worst to breed for this sector, but but sometimes it gets moving. And, and so if it gets, it's above EMA's four and eight down here. Um, you know, if it can turn that 190 into support, that would be bullish. It's hitting EMA 13 at 199, so a close above two dollars would, would signal more upside. And then it has to get above this middle Bollinger Band. You know, you can see these candles here. We're working on turning that into support and failed and it pulled back so th th those are the big levels to break if it can you know get above that then you do have that 200 day simple moving average just above at 231 so yeah so keep an eye on ft ft okay there you go this is some uh you know th these are uh some blockchain bitcoin related stocks for you um yeah th uh, thank you very much for viewing this video you know we have bitcoin here you know wanting to uh break possibly above eight 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 thousand you know we had all the big dogs and everybody telling everybody that you know all, all the big time players loaded up heavy. Check out the big volume spike here. That that that's the largest uh, green uh, volume spike in uh, uh, quite some time. Okay, for a green one, right? For up day. Let's see down here. So yeah, so you've got this uh, uh, really nice. Uh, uh, volume spike so that that that's that that's good to see you know that's that's what you want to see at the bottom it, it is a big load right so so keep an eye on that 300 day simple moving average it's currently at 7536 just to make it easy if bitcoin's staying above 7500 that's going to be bullish if you see a drop below 7500 you know that's going to be a red flag if it breaks above 8000 that's going to be super bullish and be looking for a run up to that 8600 level okay Thanks for viewing this video. Check us out at our chat. I'll post a link below the video. Please uh, come uh, to the uh, premium chat. That's where it's at. Um, and, and I'll give you a link and you can check it out and see if you like it. You know, you can come check it out for free. Um, you know, if you have, uh, you know, any kind of financial difficulty, I can give you a free pass. I'm here to try to help. You know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, get rich off this website. I'm just trying to help people. Okay. Thank you.